Greetings, Obasi Scott here, Oxygen Therapy Consulting. This is the Underground Cure. Thank you guys so much for coming to this video. Listen, we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions in this area. But before I get into any of that, let's go through this disclaimer. Before starting any new detox or diet program, please take the proper steps and precautions. We are not doctors, our registered dietitians. We do not provide medical aid for the purpose of diagnosing any health or disease related sickness. The data presented and natural solutions recommended in this video are the scientific facts presented by an oxygen therapy consultant and therefore may be considered and or followed at one's own risk. The research information is open to the public. And our videos is open to the public domain for the sole purpose of educating and in no way breaches or breaks any boundaries of the law in any second of the United States of America. Now, I would implore you guys to get a pen and paper out. You're going to want to take some notes. Um, this is going to be some really good information that I'm going to share with you today. There's nothing more effective in eradicating a disease than being inspired to heal yourself and believing it has happened. So what we're going to deal with first is the belief. How do, how do you deal with a belief? How do you cultivate a belief? Well, first I got to ask you, what's a belief? A belief is a thought you keep thinking. So here's a thought that you can keep thinking that will cultivate the belief. My body and mind are happy and healthy, which strive in a constant state of perfect health and rejuvenation. Now, the first time you start saying this, you're going to be like, yeah, right. I still know that I can't eradicate the virus. I still believe that. Doctors have told me that, blah, blah, blah. But the more you start replacing that belief with this thought, this saying, and your mouth starts saying it, the more you will start reprogramming your mind to accept the fact that you can heal yourself. 5,000 plus people have already done it with our program. So um, let's get to it. My body and mind are happy and healthy. We're striving a constant state of perfect health and rejuvenation. My body and mind are happy and healthy. We're striving a constant state of perfect health and rejuvenation. Now, the question for today or the topic that we're going to deal with is how to deal with your partner lying about being infected. How to deal with your partner lying about being infected. Well, the first in the, the, the first answer that I want to give to you is don't assume the worst initially. Guys, a lot of things happen in this world to people, and I think that a lot of people, um, they get in the in the reality or they get in the habit of assuming the worst about a situation. And I'm telling you from talking to so many people that a lot of times with this virus, that's not the case. I mean, the worst is not, the intentional harm is not what the person intended. Okay. People who are infected with this virus go through a series of emotions just trying to cope with it themselves. This does not even consider the judgment they think others have about them or the stigma that society has about people who are affected. Okay, guys, people deal with a lot of frustrations, a lot of depression, you know, suicidal thoughts who have this virus. Um, that's just within them. Um, and then once compounded on top of that, uh, they start to think about what others think about or what society says, or they see something that says that you can't heal yourself, or, you know, they start you know, getting all this input from the environment that um, makes them feel even worse, okay? So thinking what people think about the situation and what you think about it yourself, um, you know, a lot of times you can even let society determine what you think about it or what you think about uh, the virus yourself. So those two things compounded on top of each other can be uh, part of it. If you if your partner is saying they don't have the virus and you have not had sex. Now, again, guys, we're dealing with how to deal with your partner lying about being infected. OK, if your partner is saying they don't have the virus and you have not had sex, it's OK to ask them to go get tested um, or even offer to pay for it, especially if you guys are in a committed relationship or you've been in a relationship for a while. Um, and when I say, wow, this, this is probably something new for you a couple of months. Um, I mean, given the fact that you have not had sex yet in this situation. Um, yeah, I mean, if you like the person enough, you want to be with them, you think they're worth it, even offer to pay for it. You know, let them know that, you know, you really want to know. OK, because you're, you, you, you're starting to have feelings or you're getting emotionally involved in the relationship and you want to know. OK, in the same vein, you still come first. You still come first. It's your life and your health. So, you know, don't sacrifice your life and your health just because you think that you're falling in love with somebody and you don't want to ask them the question. You don't want to have to talk with them about it. 
Um, God, guys, remember you, your life, it's your life. You still in the same vein come first. Okay. If your partner is saying they don't have the virus and you have had sex, okay, they're saying they don't have the virus and you have had sex. This is a more serious situation. At this point, if you are having symptoms, okay, they're saying that they don't have it. You guys have had sex, but you are having symptoms. At this point, you are having symptoms. You should honestly and carefully disclose the situation to them and stop any sexual contact. Okay, guys, from the point that you start having having symptoms and you notice something's not right, that's when you should cut it. You should just cut any sexual contact, no kissing, no intercourse, no oral sex. Cut any of that um, as soon as you recognize that you're having symptoms and disclose this. When I say disclose this, honestly, like be sincere, be honest about the situation. Carefully keep yourself safe, okay, to your um, partner, okay? Uh, you should ask them to get tested for their safety and to find out if you got it from them. So it's twofold. You're asking for them to get tested because you want to know if they've can you know if they if they've contracted it from you, uh, maybe you gave it to them. Um, so for their safety as well and to find out if you got it from them. So if they have it and you guys have been together and you know you didn't have it before you got together, then it's pretty obvious you probably got it from them. Okay. After both parties are tested, if they are not infected and you are, okay, so if your partner is infected and you are, okay, be open, honest, and talk with whatever, be open, honest, and okay with whatever decision they want to make without any pressure. So if they get tested and it comes back that they're not infected, but you're having symptoms now and you're like, well, I might be infected or you've been tested and you're like, I am infected. You need to be honest with them. Um, if they haven't gotten infected by you, that's awesome. But you still need to give them the choice. Be open and honest and be OK with whatever their decision they want to make without any pressure. So I know it's hard to um, or it seems challenging to be in a relationship where you you. Um, don't want to put pressure on somebody because you have feelings involved, but you need to let them know, listen, um, I, I am suffering from this. I'm working on it. Um, and if you decide to stay with me or, you know, not, that's completely up to you. I won't be upset. Um, this is just what I found out that I'm dealing with. Okay. If they are indeed infected, you are showing symptoms and you only found out because you asked them to be tested, then the decision is yours to make. So if they're infected and you're showing symptoms, basically both of you guys are infected um, and you only found out because you asked them to get tested, then the decision is yours to make. Because you, you may have caught it from them. You may have got infected from them, um, which, which you could deal with you know, in a couple of different ways. Um, but it is still kind of slick you know, that they didn't offer the information to you, okay? It's it's still a little, I don't know, kind of iffy if they didn't tell you before you ask them to get tested. If you are both infected, they then express, then express your frustrations to them. That's what that should say. Oops, let's go back out. Um... If you are both infected, so the situation is you had them get tested, they are infected, you're infected, okay? Express just for your frustrations. I mean, don't don't hurt physically the person in any, you know, I'm not advocating that, but I am advocating that you let them know in an intelligent, in a communica communication, um, using good communication, let them know how you feel. Um, but try to hear the reason they have for not telling you. And make your decision from there. Okay, guys, a lot of times, like I said, people go through a lot of different emotional situations. And there could be a thousand different reasons um, that they don't tell you that they are infected. They could be, um, you know, not feel it's the right time. They, they, feel, they may feel like you're not at the same level of the relationship. And they're not ready. Um, they may feel like um, they may be scared of your reaction, you know. So try... Um, Try to hear the reason, you know, without after you've vented your frustration uh, or whatever, 
try to hear the reason that they have for not telling you and make your decision from there. Um, if you think that they're a genuine person and you think that, you know, honestly, you know, they weren't trying to deceive you or hurt you, then that's a good place to be. OK, and the positive side is if you both could support each other when you go through our protocols and eradicate the virus together. So situation is you had them tested, they're infected, you're infected, now you're both infected. Um, but in that, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Number one, you can't eradicate the virus. Number two, you could go through it together um, and you could support each other um, in this thing. And you can make it fun. You can make the journey fun. And, and you know, what kind of story would that be to say, you know, me and my my partner, my girlfriend, my wife or whatever, we were infected um, and uh, we decided to eradicate the virus together. We decided to go through the underground cures protocol and uh, eradicate the virus together. And we supported each other through that process. So um, that's something that you can think about as well. Now, if they are indeed infected and you have not contracted the virus yet, so this is the last scenario I'm going to talk about. They are infected. They, they got tested. They came back positive. But you have not contracted the virus yet. First of all, thank the universe for um, you not have contracted the virus. Okay. Um, then you're really at a crossroads. Okay. And should only consider staying with them if they are open to going through one of our protocols to eradicate the virus. Okay. So, um, I mean, if I put myself in that situation, you know, um, I had somebody, I thought one of my partner, I had my partner, you know, I had her get tested and came back. She was infected. She, and she didn't tell me, um, and I go get tested and I find out I'm not infected. Okay. Um, really I'm at a crossroad and should only consider staying with her if they are open to going through or she will be open to going through the protocol to eradicate the virus. Um, if not, then you really got to look at your belief about this. You got to look at, you know, are you willing to use protection the rest of your life? You know, are you willing to take that risk? Uh, I don't know what stage of the game you are with your relationship, but um, there, there are some considerations um, that need to be looked at so far as um start so far as your future together okay now let's look at some tips to deal with tips to deal with let's get that right to deal with a partner who may be lying about being infected number one if you notice symptoms don't assume it don't assume it was them if you notice symptoms in yourself don't assume it was them some people contracted from birth from their parents so we've had several people um, that have just, you know, I've never had sex before and I have the virus. Well, sometimes it can be contracted through the birth canal and sometimes it's not fully eradicated um, at birth or with the doctors on hand, okay? Uh, two, make yourself the priority either way. If they're, if they're infected and didn't tell you are any situation or scenario that we dealt with in this video if they're not if either way make yourself the priority if you're infected do what you need to eradicate the virus if they're infected do what you need to do to protect yourself period okay three realize it's not entirely your fault okay so if it comes out that you are infected um you know you had to catch it from somewhere um it just didn't pop up so it's not entirely your fault. You know, like I said, it could have came from your parents, could have came from somebody in the past. Um, and it's not your partner's fault either. Um, guys, when I tell you that there, you know, I talk to people that are, you know, on the phone crying, you know, literally just like in a, in a bad state, guys, you got to forgive yourself and move forward. Okay. Number four and last but not least is don't, get stuck in anger or self-pity focus on moving forward guys don't get stuck in anger or self-pity focus on moving forward okay make eradication the priority take action now and get your eradication so it doesn't matter if you're infected they're infected or both of you guys are infected make eradication the priority don't make being upset at that person a priority even if y'all don't stay together if y'all stay together make it the priority if y'all don't stay together make eradication the priority 
It doesn't matter. Make eradication a priority. Take action now. Get your recommendation, guys. Get your recommendation. All right, I need you to stop what you're doing. Take a breath. Let's deal with these important steps. Number one, subscribe to the channel. Number two, hit the bell down in the corner so you're notified when I do a new video. Number three, leave a message, positive message. Um, it's like your mom used to say, if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say it on our channel. Don't say it on our video. And last but not least is share this video. Two ways you can do that. Number one, you can take the URL and post on any platform that you're a part of. Number two, you can download the video and re-upload it on the channel that you have, feel has a following that you feel this would be good information to pay forward to. Okay, in doing that, I've asked that you keep the same title and you keep the same description, just copy and paste that information into your video upload. Second important thing, complete a treatment application to get a recommendation. Guys, this is what I was saying on the last slide, is you need to get a recommendation. Focus on eradication, get your, get your application done, get your recommendation so you know which kit is going to be best for you. Number three, go to undergroundcare.com, get your free herpes eradication video training series. That link is in the bio. It's a seven-part video training series that I did that you can get access to right now. It'll be emailed, um, drip emailed directly to you every day. Okay, follow us at The Underground Cure on Twitter and follow us at UGC Healed Me on Instagram. Okay, guys, um, if you got any questions, email us at undergroundcure.gmail.com. You can hit visit the website at theundergroundcure.com or you can text us at 678-824-2873. Looks like it's off center to me. All right. Need a private consultation? You got a situation? You got a private situation? We'll get some answers. Let's talk. Get some answers in direction. That's what I'm here for, guys. Um, undergroundcure.com backslash consultation. You know, some people deal are dealing with stuff that they don't want to talk about on the email or in an email. They're dealing with stuff they don't want to talk about to my support team. Um, and you want to talk to me directly, well, book your private consultation Consultation at theundergroundcare.com backslash consultation. This will be a private phone conversation where we will discuss solid natural recommendations to eradicate herpes and any other health concerns you may have. This call will answer all your questions and give you a roadmap to create forward momentum. With that, guys, I want to thank you guys for watching. Hope that that was beneficial for you, for you all. This is The Underground Cure. I'm Mobasi Scott, your oxygen therapy consultant. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you guys happy, healed, and completely zen-free. Talk to you soon.